I never mained old Poppy, but I was always fond of weird and weak champions, and so the champion that everyone said did not fit in the game at all had me intrigued. As one of the earlier reworks in League of Legends, there was a lot of room for changes, both to balance a broken champion and to innovate with a new rework. But before we consider changes, let's look at Poppy before her rework. While new Poppy is a tank, old Poppy was… something. Somewhere between a bruiser, a carry, and an assassin, but not all at once like some modern champions are. To help illustrate what I mean, let's talk about her abilities. Poppy's passive was Valiant Fighter. When she took damage higher than 10% of her current health, she reduces the excess by 50%. This was a confusing ability for a lot of players at the time. To explain with an example, if Poppy had 100 HP and an attack did 20 damage, it's higher than 10% of her HP, which would be 10, so the leftover 10 damage would be reduced by 50%. If Poppy had 300 health and an attack did 1000 damage, 30 damage would be taken, but the remaining 970 would be reduced by 50%, leading to a total of 485 damage. It was also calculated after resistances, so that would be a lethal amount of damage. In really basic terms, Poppy took reduced damage, especially from burst, and this was more effective the lower her HP was. Poppy's old Q was Devastating Blow, enhancing her next auto attack to deal magic damage. It had the usual 100% AD ratio on all auto attack enhancers, and a 60% AP ratio, while also dealing 8% of the target's maximum health. This naturally gave Poppy high burst damage, anti-tank damage, and mixed damage if she built AD by converting it to magic. This would also apply Sheen effects like Trinity Force, converting that to magic too, for absolutely tons of damage on a fairly low cooldown. Poppy's W was Paragon of Demacia, granting her a stack that gave 1.5 to 3.5 based on ability level, attack damage, and armor every time she dealt or received damage, up to a max of 10 stacks. The active of Poppy's W would grant maximum stacks immediately and grant her bonus move speed for 5 seconds. Poppy's E was Heroic Charge. Scaling with 40% AP, Poppy would dash to a target enemy, carrying them along with her charge, and if they collide with a wall, they take even more magic damage and are stunned for 1.5 seconds. Poppy's R was Diplomatic Immunity. It was one of the most unique abilities at the time, and even now. Poppy chose a target champion, and would do increased damage to the target, and be immune to all other damage and effects from enemies that are not the target champion. This had one of two main uses from Poppy players. The first and obvious use is to alter champion that you wanted to take down by using the bonus damage and ignoring other enemies, like targeting an AD carry and ignoring the peeling from their support. This was favoured by AP Poppy players especially. The second use was to alter the weakest enemy on their team, like the support. This would make you immune to all damage and effects of their stronger champions, essentially giving you immunity to damage and CC. This gave AD Poppies free reign to wreak havoc in a teamfight as they like, so long as they could catch up to and reach their targets. This all sounds well and good, but there were plenty of flaws with Poppy as a champion. She did not really fit anywhere in Summoner's Rift's meta, and though Riot didn't enforce champions going into particular roles at the time, having someone fit absolutely nowhere was a bit of a problem. As such, she was often thrown into top lane. But this had one problem in common with the many problems she would have as a jungler, a significant lack of sustain. This meant any top laners with any kind of poke, or even melee tops with any kind of sustain like Nasus and Renekton, would always come out on top trading with Poppy, who basically did nothing till late game, with a tough time getting there. She could jungle, but that would be incredibly inactive with slow single target attack clears. But when she did manage to get ahead, her free reign over teamfights didn't give her many counterplay options. She could easily take someone out of a teamfight or force all enemies away by ulting the weaker champions. And with such polarizing highs and lows and an uninteractive kit to both play as and against, anyone could have seen her rework coming. The rework kept many things the same about Poppy, and surprisingly, one of those things was her passive and her W passive. The old passive was moved on to her W passive. Now, she gains 10% total armor and magic resistance, which doubled to 20% when she was below 40% maximum health. This was much simpler to understand than Poppy's old passive, and whilst less effective, it still made her tankier than she looked when on lower health. Poppy's new passive was Iron Ambassador, 
allowing her to throw her buckler at a target enemy when off cooldown. The shield would drop on the floor and could be picked up by Poppy to gain a shield for 3 seconds. If the shield throw kills a target, the shield bounces straight back to Poppy. Poppy's Q was changed to slam the floor as an AoE skill shot directly in front of her. It still did 8% of an enemy's maximum health, but now had an AD ratio of 90% while removing her AP ratio. After a second, the same damage would be dealt again as the area explodes. The ability now does physical damage instead of magical as well. Poppy's W active gives her bonus movement speed and an anti-dash zone in a circle around her, dealing damage and stopping the first dash caught in the area, knocking them up, then slowing and grounding them for 2 seconds. Poppy's E is mostly unchanged, only the stun now scales from 1.6 to 2 seconds based on ability level, up from 1.5, and now it only has an AD ratio, and does physical damage. Poppy's new R slams her hammer on the ground after charging, sending a quaking wave in a line that deals physical damage, but also knocks enemies back towards their own fountain. The distance scales with how much Poppy charges the ability. If charged for less than 0.25 seconds, the enemies are knocked up without direction for 0.75 seconds. As the old Poppy R could take someone out of a fight by killing them quickly, the new Poppy R takes enemies out of a fight quite literally by knocking them back to the fountain. This also meant that Poppy could almost selectively remove enemies from a fight, so she doesn't need to concern herself with them when engaging outnumbered, becoming similar in utility to her old ultimates, just with far more counterplay options like body blocking, blinking or flashing, and positioning. No doubt the majority of players would call the Poppy rework a resounding success in many different ways, and I would be amongst them. However, I must say that the amount I played Poppy went down massively after her rework. With removing the AP ratios and the old ultimate, some build options were removed from Poppy. Not only that, but with her W scaling with maximum armor and magic resistance, it encouraged building tank or bruiser, weakening full damage builds like old carry Poppy. My reason to play Poppy was often very damage oriented, and that was hit massively. Lethality Poppy is a funny build I like to do in ARAMs every now and then, but to be a damage carry like the old days in a more sustained fashion rather than just burst is not only more difficult since her Q is a skill shot now that can't use Trinity Force as well, it's basically impossible. However, her AD ratios are nothing bad at all. If we see old AP Poppy as Burst Poppy and AD Poppy as Bruiser Poppy, then both playstyles are absolutely still alive. Just much harder to play than before while still having good payoff. Poppy's Q can still shred high health champions and can activate twice to shred even more. Her E now has an AD ratio to give it more burst for AD builds, and her ultimate can still be used to remove enemies from teamfights, or can even or advantageously uneven the odds for Poppy. Though I cannot say the rework was bad at all, I can see why people may feel nostalgic or miss old Poppy's playstyle from time to time, as I absolutely do. Damage Poppy builds are a bit weaker as they have more counterplay than before, and her ultimate is less broken, but are still absolutely playable, and the ways old Poppy was countered in lane by any amount of sustain or range is now alleviated massively compared to before thanks to her new shield. However, I'm more interested in hearing from you. What do you think of Poppy's rework? Did you like or were intrigued by the pre-rework Poppy? Did you love or hate the rework? And of course, let me know what you think of the old Lollipoppy splash art. Thanks so much for watching this video. You can find other Before the Rework videos in the end screen and the cards in the top right, or find the playlist in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.